Hello everyone and welcome to Startup Magazine's first event of 2021, Let's Get Money Savvy. I hope you're all well and that you had a nice, um, relaxing, refreshing Christmas break and that you're all refreshed and prepared for another year ahead that could be uh, an interesting one. Of course, that we know for startups along their journey, one of the biggest challenges is funding. And so every year we do an issue that is focused on funding um, to help you guys along the way. And obviously this year is no different. We start to, we decided to kick the year off with that exact topic. And so beforehand, we uh, asked some of you guys on social media about uh, your recent funding experiences, if you had been feeling any different about funding with the current climate. And interestingly enough, 80% of you said that you had struggled to find funding in 2020. This was then echoed with only a third of you answering that you'd had any funding uh, opportunities last year at all. And the most common types of funding that you guys were after were angel grants and crowdfunding. So... Kevin maybe you want to speak to you today. Uh, finally, you also said that 90% of you had plans to raise in 2021. So hopefully we may see some more successful funding opportunities this year, fingers crossed. Um, make sure you all keep an eye out on Thursday for um, your exclusive look at our next issue, which is all about the different types of funding. Um, again, we've spoken to some industry experts and got them to, to to go into the details and the real truths about different types of funding. So hopefully it'll help you along your way. Um, this is released on Friday, but obviously you guys will get an exclusive look on Thursday. So check your inboxes. Today will be a little bit different from your bog standard, let's talk about funding sort of events. As normally when it comes to raising funds, it's you guys, the startups that are pitching to the investors. But today the tables have turned and we've asked some of our industry experts to pitch the different types of funding to you. So who are our panellists? Our panellists pitching to you today include Kevin R. Smith, CEO and founder of Boom and Partners, who will be pitching crowdfunding. Helena Murphy, uh, the co-founder of Raising Partners, who will be pitching VC funding. Clarissa Clamillary from the Accelerator Network, pitching accelerators. And last but certainly not least, Lissa Gillett, head of funding and support at Virgin Startups, pitching loans. So after the pitches and the main event, we will then be going into some breakout rooms with uh, one of our industry experts being in each. And there'll also be someone from Startups Magazine. So come and join us in there and ask all these burning questions, have more of like a conversation with us. Um, and basically just, you know, ask for advice, any sort of questions or concerns that you have, different types of funding, then here's your, here is your time to talk to the experts. Um, if you do have any burning questions throughout, then please obviously do use the Q&A or the chat box. And if there is time, then I will ask your questions. But if you can, save them to the breakout rooms afterwards. Um, we'll be posting the links and the details for the breakout rooms in the chat box um, at some point. So keep an eye out. And yeah, we look forward to chatting with all of you some more at the end. Well, without further ado, I will stop talking now and introduce our first panellist. So Kevin, here we go. The floor is now yours. Thank you very much. Well, I'm, I'm going to cheat just a little bit and I hope you'll forgive me. So I'm going to cheat in the way that um, I'm going to pitch uh, crowdfunding to everybody. But in so doing, I want to cheat a bit by saying... Uh, some of the, the tips that you need to know about crowdfunding. So I hope it's going to be a bit more informative uh, and not just me trying to tell you the benefits of it. So the first things you have to do when you're, you're looking at raising finance is, of course, do you really need to raise finance? So lots of companies think they do. The majority actually do need to, but don't fall into the trap of thinking that every early stage business needs to. So think of that first. Secondly, uh, the question then always comes about, well, OK, so how much is my business worth? And that in itself is another huge topic um, and something that we can debate in, in many ways, uh, maybe at another time. Um, what I would say immediately about valuations is it's important to get the valuation right. If you're overvaluing your business, 
it's going to have two big effects. One is you're not going to get the investment because whoever is potentially looking at investing might have an interest, but if it's too expensive, they're not going to buy it just as any other product. And then secondly, you don't want to uh, have a, a valuation that's too high. And that would then mean next time you go to raise finance, you're going to have a dreaded down round, which is where you're looking at raising finance, uh, either at a lower valuation or even at the same valuation. So think hard about that valuation. Now, having said that, valuations differ depending on what uh, platform, how you're looking at raising. And crowdfunding typically has a higher valuation for businesses than VCs. Uh, many reasons for that. Uh, and that would typically be because VCs um, maybe uh, uh, argue better, uh, but they're, they're one uh, body that's investing rather than a, a lot of investors. Um, so crowdfunding though, uh, well, well, no, another step back. So when you raise finance, there are three typical routes. One after the bootstrapping, one would be angel investing or high net worths. One is crowdfunding and the third would be VCs. There are other people here today uh, talking about some of those other routes and they each have benefits and they each have drawbacks. Um, but for many people, crowdfunding does actually make funding possible that wouldn't otherwise be possible. Uh, put simply, VCs tend to be focused on, on uh, higher raises and businesses that are more advanced in, in their um, stage of development. And high net worths and angels, uh, you obviously have to be looking at as, as individuals or, or groups of individuals, whereas crowdfunding uses technology to get out to, to the masses, as it were. Um, one of the, the very real benefits, though, of crowdfunding is the whole piece around marketing. So if you think about it logically, every customer you have, every person on your database, every interaction you've ever had with anybody is a potential investor. And likewise, when you're doing a crowdfunding pitch, uh, every potential uh, investor, every, every person that actually invests, then actually becomes an ambassador for your company and will run around saying, hey, look at this great business I've just invested in, and uh, maybe becomes a, a, a buyer of your product. And to give you a perfect uh, example of that, and uh, it couldn't be any more uh, hot off the press, only today I invested in a business on a crowdfunding platform, and their product happens to be available uh, in Tesco's. And so the very next time I can get myself anywhere near a Tesco, I'm going to actually go and buy their product and see what it's like as, as a product. Um, so that's an investor turned into a, uh, a, a customer in, in a very real form. So when you're doing a, a crowdfunding raise, you uh, have to go through the process of uh, looking at how the uh, to, to value the business, and then what are the mechanics of that? And many people know about crowdfunding, obviously, but they don't actually know the mechanics. So very simply, they operate in much the same way. Uh, I guess I should explain that crowdfunding, the way that most people speak about it, is about selling equity. There are other platforms that are selling um, I guess, advanced payments to fund prototypes and things, uh, or, or even social campaigns, uh, such as Kickstarter. And then there are crowdfunding platforms for debt, uh, such as Funding Circle. But the ones that most people think about as crowdfunding is equity, so people like uh, Crowdcube or uh, Cedars. But there are many, many others. And uh, crowdfunding uh, for equity typically wants soft commitment of about 60% that you have raised uh, from people that are saying, yes, we're interested. And that sounds very daunting, but when you know the algorithms behind how the, uh, the crowdfunding platforms work and how to set your valuation and how much to say you're going for, it's actually far, far more achievable than, than many people think. And again, the 
uh, the crowdfunding platforms are very, very good at making sure that uh, only the right businesses go on their platforms. And so they have an 80, 85% success rate in, in raising money. If you're on a crowdfunding platform, if you don't raise all of your money, uh, that is your target, you don't get any of it. So it is very, very important to get that, that level right and to do your, your background work. Um, another thing to say is, however you're raising money, don't leave it too late. Time and time again, companies come to me saying, oh, we, we need money and we want it in one month, two months. It's not normally going to happen. You should be allowing six months for any crowd uh, raise or any fundraise. And ideally, the more work you can do in the background um, before you, you start that progress, uh, the, uh, the, the better because um, you've got more people lined up as potential investors before you start. Uh, so once you've got the, uh, that, that ball rolling, um, you have to make sure that you've done uh, a, 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 typically a video, you've got all the paperwork in place. The platforms are very, very good at holding your hand and helping to make sure it happens because any fees that you pay, which are typically six or so percent of monies raised, are only payable on, uh, on a successful raise. So it's in the platform's best interests to make sure that you are successful. And <clears throat> as such, they will help do everything that they can to make sure that uh, it, it is a successful raise. And uh, over the, 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 the transactions that, that I've been involved with, there are lots of uh, I was going to say tricks, lots of techniques when you know what those algorithms are, how the platforms work, when you understand the psychology of the investors. It's very important that you hit the ground running and you keep running quite fast. Nobody wants to see a, 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 a campaign that's either very low percentage funded or is not really making much progress. Uh, the one I invested in today uh, was exactly like some of the ones that, that I've been involved with, where it was uh, over 100% funded within the first day or so. And that's a successful campaign. And people invest when they see success. Even if they're interested in investing in a campaign, if it's only 60% funded, uh, they'll think, mm, well, maybe I'll invest, but I'll, I'll just wait and I'll just see and everybody's thinking the same. If it's 100%, then everybody's thinking, I'll invest now because it might get pulled uh, early. So typically when you're on a platform, you get uh, 40 days uh, of live and uh, you can pull that at any time. Uh, I guess typical amounts are between 150,000 to one, two million pounds for a crowdfunding raise. Uh, but the, the range is, is bigger, so, so maybe 100,000 to five plus million uh, are, are seen on, on the platforms. And many companies come back uh, several times to, to raise more. And uh, so it, it can appeal to, to any business, but the ones it is best for are B2C companies because of this marketing uh, approach where you get uh, your, your customers that are interested in actually becoming investors and your investors can become uh, customers. Because what you're trying to do on a crowdfunding campaign is to tell the right story in the right way and make sure that the business and the investment idea is easily understood by people without specialist knowledge. Uh, whereas if you go to a VC, you can expect to go to a specialist uh, VC with specialist knowledge in certain sectors, and they are much more able to understand the, the details of something more complex. Uh, so, so that's uh, one of the reasons that um, people make choices. But um, a, a, a good reason why people choose a crowdfunding platform as opposed to angels is because you have one investor. They now typically have what is called a nominee shareholding structure. So you on your cap table would have cedars and they are the, the shareholder. And then beneath them are the beneficial owners of the shares. 
and you deal with seeders as the shareholder or Crowdcube or whoever, and then uh, they in turn look after the beneficial owners. Your fees will pay all of the legal costs, all of the share certificate, uh, all of the EIS certificate issuance, all of those uh, aspects. And it's a, it's, it's a good way of, of actually raising finance uh, in a relatively easy way. And it's a lot of work in the pitch, but nevertheless, it's only one lot of work. Whereas the, the going round and, and pitching to many angels individually or collectively is again, a, uh, a fairly time consuming process. So it's a, it's a different approach, um, but uh, it's, it's I, I would say in many cases, it, it's the best uh, approach. And then when you want to go back, uh, it, it's easier to, uh, to, well, to go back. You've already got those existing shareholders that will come back and uh, want to, to get involved. So um, I, I guess really the bottom line is crowdfunding is ideal for many businesses, um, but think about what the benefits are of crowdfunding compared to others. Um, and to, to come back to the question that was mentioned earlier about uh, well, COVID and 2020, 2021, uh, only last week, uh, Cedars announced that they had raised more money uh, for more companies from more investors than in 2019. And when you look at the amount of money going over the platforms, uh, about the same amount of money is being invested by investors, uh, but there are a few uh, less companies on those platforms because clearly some companies in the current climate are not uh, in the best position. But for those companies that are, I would argue that you're actually better placed to raise more money more quickly because there's the same amount of uh, investors, but fewer businesses looking for that money. So I think there are ideal opportunities now to raise finance. Uh, I'm, in the, I'm in conversation with a number of businesses about helping them do that. And um, indeed crowdfunding is ideal for that. I don't think COVID has made any difference whatsoever. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of retail investors that have actually saved money by uh, not commuting, not buying their daily coffee, uh, whatever it happens to be and maybe a bit more time spent uh, looking at, at investing in, in crowdfunding and the like. So all in all, absolutely worth thinking about and, and uh, con considering. Um, all I would say is make sure you know what you're doing, make sure you understand how the crowdfunding platforms work. And uh, yeah, well, I wish you luck. And uh, if anybody wants to talk to me after this session or indeed afterwards all together, very happy to, to speak uh, further. Back to you, Anna. Amazing. Thank you, Kevin. That was that was great. Um, I don't know if it's just me um, noticing it more as I'm like in the industry a bit more, but I've seen a lot more crowdfunding campaigns the last, not like the year to do with COVID, but the last few years than there were previously when I very very first started is is that a trend do you see more and more every year like is it a growing I, I think so I think um it's it is something well that, that that's gathering in pace um as I said there are many different platforms out there some of them are more typically focused on on sort of specialist things one of the big benefits that that I didn't mention is there are many businesses that invest through um, the, the big platforms so it's a way of bigger business being able to invest in in smaller businesses as well um, and it's also the very typical one that that more normal as if I can put them individuals rather than high net worths or ultra high net worths can also access EIS and SEIS tax advantages. So they don't have to be big, but it's just a way of, of uh, normal people being able to access potential high growth businesses. So I, I think there's a lot of interest out there. Um, yeah, and I, I, as I say, I think they fulfill a very important niche in, in the market for, for early stage businesses. Definitely, and it's, like you say, it's 
something that everyone can get involved in if they want to so absolutely and and there's if if you look at the types of businesses out there they are so um far ranging in type of business yeah so every, something for everyone definitely well thank you very much and yes i look forward to your breakout room afterwards with some more chat um now let me please introduce you to the lovely Helena, who will be chatting, if she can, all about VCs in just 15 minutes. No, I'm joking. We, we'll, we'll give you a bit of leeway, Helena. So Thank yes, you. the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Anna. Hi, everyone. I'm just going to do the classic, I feel so cliche on Zoom, um, trying to share my screen. I've got some slides to run through with all of you today. So hopefully you guys can, can see this okay, Anna, I'm assuming yes. Um, perfect, okay, great. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Helena Murphy. I am one of the co-founders and the managing director of Raising Partners. Just to kick off, I want to give you some context about our business and, and what we do and how we help people. Um, we started in 2017 on the back of my own experience raising investment and being in the position that many of, um, of you are now where I was looking for funding, I raised my first couple of rounds very successfully and a couple of rounds not so successfully. And along the way, I learned lots of um, tips and tricks and insight. And I met tons of investors. And what I realized on that journey um, that also included an absolute catastrophic catastrophic failure, uh, which is a complete other story for another day. I did a podcast with Anna a few weeks ago, actually, and it's, it's in that. So go go and listen to that podcast episode we did. Um, but I realized that you might approach a solicitor to help you with legals. You go to an accountant to help you with stuff for HMRC. And I, I didn't know of anyone that was really helping people understand the early um, investment landscape for startups. There's lots of help once you reach a certain level of revenue and turnover, but not much happening at an early stage. And that's why we started raising partners. So we work across the entirety of the early stage investment landscape from angel rounds to crowdfunding campaigns to um, large scale VC funds, helping people with everything from financial modeling to pitch decks to actually um, managing the campaigns themselves. And we've done 27 successful fully managed campaigns where we were responsible for everything um, over the last three years and now raised just over 25 million pounds in, in the process. So hopefully that gives you a bit of context to where I'm coming from. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about VC and, and the, the brief was to pitch VC, but again, like Kevin, I am going to cheat and say that this is more to give you awareness and insight and information as to what raising VC money would be like for you and your business, um, because it's not right for everyone. Um, it's, you know, you are more legally bound to your investors than you are your spouse. So it's a very big decision. And, and that's something I'm incredibly passionate about sharing is just giving people all of the options as to what the different funding um, mechanisms could mean for you and your business. So today, I'm going to specifically talk about what um, VC money could mean for you and, and how to help you decide whether or not it might be right. So we're going to quickly cover in 15 minutes, understanding what you want, understanding investor motivations, what you need to have in place, how you can get in touch with some of these VC investors if you're like, this is the route for me, and just some of the key considerations for VC rounds um, as and when you get there. So first of all, Step one, as with any funding round, and Kevin touched on this already this, um, this afternoon, and that is getting clear on what you want. And this is critical to any fundraise, but never more so than VC. Um, once you're on the VC train, you're not getting off it. It's very difficult to get off. Um, they're a very specialist kind of investor. Um, so you need to be crystal clear on your vision and your mission for your business and where you want to go. So, and that's things like thinking about what the long-term goal is for your business. What's your exit plan? These are all things that investors want to know. And how much money is it going to take you to get there? You really need to have a, a great financial model in place to tell you that kind of information. Um, if you don't like Excel, find a friend or get someone professional to help you with Excel. Um, you'll never spend better money in your life than getting a really beautiful spreadsheet done for you that tells you how much money you need. Um, and it's, it's really important so that when you decide which kinds of VCs are right for you, you have a clear path that you're presenting to them of great, come with me. This is my business. This is my idea. This is where we're going. This is how much money it's going to cost me to get there. And this is why I want you to come on board. That's what a VC investor is looking for. 
when it comes to thinking about how much money you need, not only do you need to look at it in a financial model, but you, you need to think about what's realistic given the current state of the market. And I completely agree with you, Kevin, that I've, I've actually seen it myself. We did more transactions last year despite COVID than, than any year previous. We saw more money across tables, not just from VC investors, but on the crowd through angel networks and, and angel syndicates alike. Um, but you do have to be realistic about what the market can take and particularly through a lens with what's realistic given your traction to date. If you've never raised money before, it's super unlikely that you're going to walk into a VC office and they're going to write a check for a million pounds and only want 10% of your business and off you'll go on your merry way. Unless you have raised significant money in the past, you've got a track record as a serial entrepreneur and a really big exit behind you. Anomalies do happen. Um, but you do need to sit down and have a look at what is realistic given the current state of the market, what is going to get you to that next point of inflection and growth within your business. And, and the key inflection point that you're looking for is what's going to get you to the next point of an increase in your valuation. Um, and that plays into what valuation you can command in this round. Typically on that funding journey, you would raise from friends and family, in one round, potentially pre-seed, high net worth angel investors potentially do a crowd fund in the mix as well. And, and VCs really tend to come into their own. Um, once you're raising a million pound plus, you've got a proven product market fit, you've acquired some customers, you've proved your business works. So if you're at a really early stage, unless you're in some kind of deep medical technology and sciences, I would pretty much rule VC off the table straight away, but please come to me in, in the breakout rooms if you've got something specific you want to talk about. Is this right for VC? This is my kind of business because it is very nuanced. I don't believe there's a one size fits all approach to fundraising. Um, but first point is get clear on what you want and does that fit with investors? Does it fit with VC investors? And to do that, you need to understand what they're motivated by. And it's pretty blunt. They're motivated by returns and big markets. And VC investors are investing other people's money. Uh, so it's not their cash, it's angel investors or LPs or high net worth institutions, pension funds, all that good stuff, all invest in early stage VC businesses that they trust to spot the winners and grow their capital over generally a cycle of seven years. So they are looking for big markets that can deliver significant returns on their investment. They're looking for scalable and tech enabled businesses more often than not. Um, they want to believe, they have to believe that the business has the potential for a multi-billion dollar exit in many cases. So let's say a fund has a, a pot of 820 million to spend. They need to believe that one that each of their companies can exit for 8.2 billion pounds so that they can get the kind of return hurdles that they're looking for. And that's very quick, rough maths that I've just done right now. So don't hold me to that, but they're looking for large, significant exits and returns. They also want to know that they can reinvest and you're going to have enough capital to be able to get to that point. Um, they're really heavily motivated by a senior leadership team, their experience and what those in individuals are like to work with. This is the number one question I get from investors. Whenever I work with introducing people to investors or introducing people to VC funds, the first call we have, their question is always, what is this team like to work with? Have you spotted any red flags in their personalities and their leadership style? Are they good at getting back to you? Do you believe this person could run this business? And Helena, if you were writing this check, would you write it? Um, that's what they're really looking for. Really skilled individuals that can lead this business to a, to a large exit. And then is there enough equity on offer for a big enough return? And, and Kevin touched on this as well as, as one of the benefits of, of crowdfunding is that VCs fit valuations into a very specific box. They need to acquire a certain amount of capital in each, in each round. Um, so there is enough potential for a big enough return. Um, and the ultimate question is, can your business scale as a function of capital? And that's the number one thing to ask yourself when deciding is, is VC right for you? Okay, so you've decided VC is for me. I've got a tech business. I'm going to need loads of money and I'm going to definitely achieve a billion pound exit. Perfect. 
I'm with you all the way. This is what you need as a basic things in place. You've decided this is what I'm going for. You need a slide deck. It needs to be good. Please don't use a template. Um, you need a financial model, minimum of five-year P&L cash flow and balance sheet. And then I would always prepare a set of FAQs. I have been in that situation, the horrible situation that everyone's afraid of, where investors ask you questions you don't know the answer to. And the best way to get around that is to write out what are the all, all of the horrible questions an investor could ask me in this situation and write out your answer to them in advance. In fact, I often prepare a PDF and send it along with the deck. Hey, you might have these kind of questions about my business. Don't worry, I've already thought of them and all the answers so that you're on the front foot. Common ones being, how did you reach this valuation? When and how do you plan to exit this business? It just shows that you're on the front foot and you're aligned with their thinking. You know that they want a return and you're the ones to give it to them. A couple of important things to remember. These assets deserve the time, they deserve your time and attention. They're really, really important. Um, so either get someone professional to help you to do them or find a friend, get some expertise, get as many around the people around the table to consider these assets as possible. You can't underestimate the value they will hold. They can raise you millions and millions of pounds. Um, and finally, you need to be able to understand them and explain them. Again, echoing what Kevin said, don't do anything you don't understand or you can't explain. Um, it just gets you into a really horrible, horrible position. I have been there, it's not great. Um, okay, identifying VC investors. So generally they fall into the buckets on the diagram on the left you'll have very early stage some kind of there's some SEIS funds in the UK just a handful of them um in fact one was a new SEIS fund was announced yesterday by Fuel Ventures um where you're raising around about 150,000 pounds often pre-revenue but post-product idea potentially post-product market fit pre-seed up to 750k, seed 1.5 million, and so on and so forth. So understand where you fit in this bracket and understand which investors also fit in that bracket. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is pitching to people who are out with their bracket. And that's a fast way to get the typical answer of come back to us when you have reached X, Y, Z vertical or milestone um, or no, it's just not right for us in our remit is because often people will go pitching to the people who are in the series A bracket when they are in the pre-seed bracket. So do your research, find investors that fit in the same um, box as you. You have to fit into their box, not the other way around. Um, and most importantly, super critically, if I can drill home one, one piece of advice, especially through a lens of VC, is finding investors who align with your vision and your mission and where you are going. Um, because they do put, they have big term sheets, large legal budgets, um, not to miss, you know, kind of put everyone off VC here a bit, but, um, you know, you just want to make sure that you're all paddling in the same boat in the same direction at the same time and that you are at the front of the boat. And that's the most important thing as the, as the entrepreneurial leader in the business. So if you're looking to identify the right kinds of VC investors, you know, do spend the time on making sure you're really clear on your investment strategy and who the right fit is um, for you. And, and don't go pitching to series B when you're in, in pre-seed. It's a really good way to lose loads of time. Um, so you've got through that, you've got all of your assets ready, you've got your investors identified. Um, the good thing about VC is that I would say that they are of, of all the brackets, certainly more so in my experience than, than angel investors, very responsive and very helpful. They have a very similar mentality as, as we do at Raising Partners, which is always to deliver as much value as they possibly can. I always say that no VC wants to be the one that turned down Facebook. Um, so I feel like they are pretty responsive. Um, they usually publish how they would prefer to be contacted if they do stick to that, there's a reason for it. We have it at Raising Partners with our angel syndicate where everything goes into a centralized CRM. So if they, if they publish a way to get in touch with them, then try and stick to that. If not, a warm introduction, a connection on LinkedIn is, is always a good idea and try and build up as much a relationship as possible in advance so that you can do your due diligence and get to know them. Um, I'm not sure how I'm doing for time, but I'll speed things up. Okay, some final key considerations for you, and I'll, and I'll throw in a few of the of the benefits of raising from from VC. Um, 
first of all, if you are a tech, scalable tech business and you're operating in that large market and you do have a, a vision for exit, VC money can be very efficient in the sense that you have, again, a bit like a Crowdcube nominee, you have generally one or, or maybe two investors if two VCs come along together and they have got deep pockets. They will finance your business and keep financing it through successive follow-on rounds up until a point where they can get a successful exit. So as long as things are all moving in the right way, it's generally reasonably easy to raise a second round of um, of funding from VCs once, once you're in the door. The second really good point about raising from VC is, is they're incredibly well connected with lots of experience and they can really help put in some of that corporate structure and governance into your business that you may miss at an early stage. So they will appoint a board advisor. They will have certain milestones and objectives that they want you to achieve. They will have a process, they will help you put in processes around running things. Quite often, many VCs can be really helpful with key hires and technical hires in, in particular, making introductions, making introductions to follow on investors at a later stage, and probably most critically, making introductions to investors at a later stage that can help you to exit. So I often work with feeder funds who will will have certain seed stage VCs who are classically looking at the next stage of VCs all the way up that ladder where they will help you get to exit. Um, and they all work together in, in quite a nice um, environment because everyone's working towards the same goal of a, of a very large exit. Some other key considerations is that, as Kevin has already said, it takes time to raise investment, minimum four months, usually about six months, depending on how much money you're looking to raise. If you're thinking, I want to raise money come the summer, you need to start now. Um, don't wait around. The second point is to, to optimize for cash in the bank. So yes, you can have a degree of perfect investor. These are my tier one investors that I would like to, to have on board in the business. But if the lights are going to turn off and you really need the money, um, then do optimize for cash in the bank or consider going down a couple of other of, uh, of different routes so that you can get cash in the bank and you don't um, end up running out of money whilst you're, whilst you're raising money. Um, don't focus too much on dilution, especially not when you're speaking to VCs. Typically 20% there or thereabouts for any VC round. Um, get the best possible professional advice that goes across the board, accountants, anyone that's helping you with raising money um, and, and critically solicitors. You want someone who has raised corporate private equity before, not any other kind of legal work, raising money for equity, preferably a solicitor that's got good relationships with investors and has worked with them before. That can be really helpful and save you tons and tons of time. Um, some businesses need VC money, other businesses don't need VC money. So really find out which one you are and then, and then stick to that. Um, as I said, if you're not thinking, oh, I'm not heavily tech enabled or there are cert definitely certain categories that this is just not right for. And then finally, treat investors like you treat your best customers. Um, cuddle them, love them, follow up with them. Um, give them the time and energy that, that they deserve and they can be really, really helpful on your journey. I hope that was useful. Really looking forward to, to the Q&A session later. Thank you so much, Helena. That was so good. And you're a little bit over time, but not like you thought you would. So you did not you like I thought I would. And just in time for my uh, for my son to arrive home who's about to uh, <laughs> burst through this door. Here he comes. You can Everyone can see the um, dog <laughs> barking in the background. <laughs> no so cute. Um, I won't um, bombard you with questions now then, I'll save them, but I do know a few people after your slides, if you didn't mind sharing them. Absolutely was... happy to share any slides. Great presentation. So thank you again. It's so right. much. And we'll see you in the breakout room. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, let me please introduce you to our next guest talking all about accelerators. It is the lovely Claire Lisa from the Accelerator Network. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for the invite. First of all, it's a pleasure to be with all of you. Let me just put my slides up. Um, wonderful. So hopefully you can all see that and hear me perfectly. So um, you've heard about crowdfunding, you've heard about VCs, and I think a lot of the things that have resonated so far 
um, have been the need for preparation um, in, in order to enroll into what is a process really of raising investment. And so as I start my presentation, which will focus on accelerator support, I think one of the key things um, that we can um, get from an accelerator is help to understand um, what investors want, what are they thinking, what are they looking for, and as a result, to position your business in a way that can be attractive to them. So understanding what they're looking for is, is vital and being able to prepare for that um, when you're just starting out, if you're a very early stage company or if you're a seed and you're looking for that next scale, um, these are all things that accelerators can support with under, I would say, a short period of time. So it's an um, intensive but dynamic um, support that accompanies you as you're navigating this fundraising um, ecosystem. So um, I've, I've been introduced, so I'm Clarissa Kemineri. I'm currently Program Operations Manager at the Accelerator Network. And my goal for the session is to run you through different types of accelerator programs according to different stages of startup development so that you can understand um, what you can expect from an accelerator according to the stage that you're at and according for the goals that you have for yourself. So I'll use as examples the ones that we're running so you can get an idea. Um, and then I'll be happy to answer any of your questions later in the breakout rooms. So as you can see on the slide, um, we provide a, a wide range of different services, all with a focus of helping tech entrepreneurs in the UK to take the next step in their uh, business journey. For the presentation, I will focus on our three key programs, which are a pre-accelerator program, which is called Fast Forward. So you'll see the logo there. Then we have a seed accelerator and then a scale-up accelerator. So each one is different, different structure, different business model, different services, different experts, um, different everything. But the denominator is helping you to validate what you've done, refine um, the work that you've done so far, validate um, your journey, strengthen your business, scale your business, and become investor ready. So from, from the Accelerator Network, what we try to do is provide accountable acceleration so that entrepreneurs can understand what they need to do to, to advance in their, um, in their different stages. So if we start with a pre-accelerator, Outcomes here can, can range. So if you are a company which is uh, at early stages, um, you can join in a, a pre-accelerator to access a next stage support. So this could be access another accelerator. And you do this by undergoing the course and then pitching at a demo day where we invite program, program um, incubator program managers or accelerator, accelerator managers from other top um, business support organizations in London so that we can act as ecosystem builders and help you and facilitate your journey as you're growing that business. So access and next stage support, validate your MVP. So really going through each, I, I usually call it each piece of the puzzle that makes up your business and really make sure that it fits together into a solution that is commercial, commercially interesting and that will have a future um, as a scalable company. So we help you with that validation. Um, there's also the component of creating, helping you to create that network that you need as you're starting to grow a business, as you need um, financial support, legal support, marketing support. So all these things that when you're starting out might feel really daunting, accelerator programs can usually help you in accessing the, the right people, the right type of services to help you with these specific issues. Um, so I would say these are the, the main outcomes that you can expect from a pre-accelerator. Um, in our case, uh, we help uh, entrepreneurs. So I've, I've covered everything on this slide. Yeah, so I'd say before I move on, um, a pre-accelerator will usually be a, a quick program. So in our case, it's six weeks where each week we focus on a different topic. And through this topic, you get to um, pitch to the, to the larger cohort. And usually these will be big cohorts, like 25 companies. So you get this component of learning by osmosis, meaning that you get to connect with other founders that are in a similar situation as yours with similar challenges. And that um, it's, they can help you in terms of finding a problem, how to overcome it, and really get into that lean and agile mindset. 
So that's the, the component of learning by osmosis. Um, there's also a huge component of mentoring. So you will get to connect with different experts, industry experts that um, are able to support you to where you can address any of your challenges, your doubts, um, anything from value proposition to investment. And you'll get to connect on a one-to-one -one basis. And in this sense, also enlarge your network because they will be able to refer you to someone else, connect you to someone else. And that's how you're really building that entrepreneurial network. Um, there's a strong investment readiness focus. And I would say for the, um, for fast forward, so for the pre-accelerator, here we will help companies that uh, don't have revenues yet. So in that sense, you're working on the MVP, you're validating it, and you might be looking for your first round of pre-seed investment. So this you can raise from business angels, non-equity financing organizations, and through the program, we help you refine your pitch so that at the demo day, you are put in front of these type of investors and get a chance to, uh, to pitch for investment. So I would say with a pre-accelerator, there's different outcomes, but the goal is really to accompany you in that really first early stage, which is one of the most crucial ones where you can understand whether you have the right personality to be a founder and whether the idea that you have can really be turned into a business. So definitely crucial. In terms of what you need to have to be able to access a pre-accelerator, I would say you need to have a concept. So you need to have worked on something where you've thought about whether the problem you're trying to solve um, doesn't have a solution in the market yet and whether there's people that are gonna buy it and, and if, whether you've, you've done your research and found evidence that says that you're really onto something. So important that you've done this sort of work already so that on the course, we validate things together. And so you have actual things that you go back to and say, maybe I need to address this in a different way. And so start to reflect on things and, and build from there. Um, you need to have planned to work full-time on your business. So this will usually be the time where you're transitioning from, I have an idea, I think it could work, but I'm also in a full-time job and, and you're in the catch chasm, chasm there to, to take a step and say, we'll give this my full time. And so again, it's, it's a crucial um, decision, a personal decision and professional decision. And hopefully with a pre-accelerator, you can get the right type of support to finally launch yourself and give it your, your full attention. Um, Pre-accelerators, as I mentioned, you don't need to have revenues, but you need to have that concept. Um, usually tech focused, at least in our case, we look for companies in the tech sector, which can range from prop tech, HR tech, FinTech, fashion tech, you name it. But there has to be that component of being digitally enabled. So it could even be an e-commerce or a platform but you need to have um, the component to scale because this is what tech investors will look for. And that's essentially what you're getting ready for, but at the very early stage. And then finally be registered um, in the UK as a company. So I'm trying to rush through because I know we still have one more speaker. Um, our next program is a seed accelerator. This is the Academy. And this is actually our most established program. We've been running it since 2012, and it was the third accelerator to be launched in London back in the day. And a lot has changed since then. It's a lot more competitive out there, which is great for startups because it means you have a lot more on offer based on the kind of needs that you have. So just to quickly run you through this program, here it's a bit more intense in the sense that we have 12 weeks, not six as a pre-accelerator. And each week we focus on a different topic of the business, really going deep into it and mainly looking at it from the investor point of view. So why do we need to focus on market uh, research and why does an investor care? So all of these questions as we're going through will hopefully sort of validate and refine and ensure that there's a product market fit, that you have right, the right type of marketing strategy to, to appeal to the right customers, um, doing a legal uh, checklist to make sure your house is in order, that you have the right financial tools, and etc. So it's really going deep into each topic and making sure those pieces of the puzzle um, tie in together. In terms of what you can get from a seed accelerator, um, mentoring is again a vital component. And in the case of, of, of our academy, for example, we match each company that we recruit to a, a mentor. But this time the mentor is not an industry expert but rather an exited entrepreneur, meaning somebody that has set up a business from scratch, has exited it, and most of the time have had several exits. And so are people that have been in your shoes, have been in your position, especially in the tech sector, 
and can now give back and are able to support you are you as you're taking really tough decisions trying to understand whether your business um, is positioned in the right way and really give you that support to, to help you grow and again with the vision of what are investors looking for how do i need to position and present a company where an investor will understand how much he puts in and how much he gets out. Because at the end of the day, as we heard from previous presentations, that will be one of the main interests. They want to understand how through your company they generate more. So in terms of benefits, I've, I've mentioned the, the strong investment readiness focus. You get, again, access to a lot of um, expert people that, that are able to help you on a one-to-one -one basis. And in terms of criteria for seed accelerators, here you need to have had some traction already. So in our case, we look for companies that have revenues from five to 30 um, K net revenues per month, and that you're looking to raise from 150 K to about a million pounds. So for us, this is a range. We've had companies that have wanted to raise more, but um, to give you an indication, and again, tech focused, but across different industries, um, so that there's really that component of, of how to scale B2B, B2C, but with, with a tech component. Um, right, so I'm getting to the third program. This is a scale-up accelerator, which is actually uh, one of our most recent initiatives. We've been running it through for about three years. And I would say it's slightly more unusual than your, your standard seed accelerators, because most of the time companies that, that get to the stage won't feel like they need support from an accelerator per se. So we're talking about companies that are generating about half a million pounds, always in the tech sector, and who are looking to raise um, from one to five million pounds of series A. So here the program is structured more around a sort of six weeks of, of intensive fixing. And here it's a lot about the due diligence because once you start to engage with VC uh, money and VC investment, the level of rigor and rigorousness um, that you need to put into everything related to your business. If it was 100 for the seed accelerator, it's a million for the Series A accelerator. So you really need to have all your cards in order. You need to have from financials to legals, um, from, from the team, which is actually a huge component. You need to make sure that as you're packing it, packaging it and presenting it to VC investors, that it's clear in stone and that they can really see how much money goes in and how much they put out. So this program has six weeks to focus on these things to sort of validate that it's there. And then we open a sort of a, a relationship with scale-up companies for 12 months. And here we will actually help you and accompany you to create the right type of introductions to the right investors, help you to negotiate the deal and help you close the deal, which is different from other, the other programs I mentioned. Because in the ones from before, it's all about, um, it's a training. It's a process that you're putting your company through to really understand the investor mindset. Um, and then at that point, you're able to start negotiating yourself, connecting, uh, sort of all the things that, that the training and the process um, teach you in terms of the, the mindset and the attitude that you need to have. So as we get to later stages um, of companies, we see that also the type of accelerator support varies a lot and and most of all becomes a lot more tailored so as we get further with the programs we will have a lot more one-on-one -on -one time because the challenges that companies will have will be very specific according to the business according to the industry and so on um, right so this is just a stats in terms of um, the the sort of support we've managed to provide um, since 2012 but then also last year alone and echoing um, some of the things that we've heard our previous speakers say, I think last year during COVID, we saw, we saw an increase in the level of interest for accelerator support. And I think this is given by a number of, of elements from people just being stuck at home and, and having more time to, to do, let's say, training courses or, or things that usually because you're so busy running your life, you wouldn't have time to. But also because we've seen a lot of people either being furloughed or fired um, that have then decided to take a plunge and create something for themselves. And so really use that time to build um, into maybe a gap in the market that they've seen or, or a solution that they've always wanted to build. And so accelerators are usually the place to go and test whether 
there is any validity in there and whether there would be any interest from the, the entrepreneurship world, let's say, to give that um, a chance. Um, voila, I think in a nutshell, I would say, uh, sort of going back to the main theme of the session, I think accelerators are a good tool that uh, as a founder, you can um, go refer to if you need support with getting into that entrepreneurial mindset and helping you prepare for when you start to engage with investors so that you know what they will ask you, why they ask you, and how you can position your company in a way that is absolutely attractive for them to put the money into. Um, so I will wrap up. Uh, I look forward to any of your questions and engaging with you in the breakout rooms. Thank you so much, Felisa. It was amazing. Um, I didn't realize that obviously you guys were one of like the original um, accelerator program. So yeah, it's great to see. And some of the stats um, were really impressive. And like I say, really great to see that you guys were still doing what you do best last year. So um, I know quite a few people in the chat have said, oh, this sounds perfect for me. How do I get in touch? Can I learn more? So yes, um, the breakout rooms are for that reason, or I'm sure you can get in touch um, with Phil Lisa um, and the Accelerator Network after as well. So thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Um, now, finally, um, we save the best till last. No, I'm kidding to all the other panelists. Um, but please let me welcome to your screens, the lovely Lisa from uh, Virgin Startups. Great, thanks very much, Anna, and um, yes, Startup loans, um, rounding us off. I'm going to try and keep this as brief as possible so that everyone gets the opportunity to jump in the room and speak to uh, the experts that you want to catch up with. So um, who are we with Virgin Startup, the not-for-profit that supports founders and future founders in the UK to start up and thrive? We were founded in 2013 by Richard Branson, and we work with founders at every stage of the journey, supporting them in starting and scaling the businesses that they're passionate about. Um, I'm going to talk about the benefits of loan funding for your startup. That will lead us into what a startup loan is, and then talk a little bit about the benefits of a startup loan in particular. So you've heard from the other panelists various other forms of funding that is available in order to fuel your startup, but it's really worth thinking about loan funding. It often gets a bad rap but it's really worth it when it comes to setting up your own business. It's a really easy way to help you test your minimum viable product in a relatively low risk manner. It gives you um, a good option to help you grow your business, especially if you've previously bootstrapped from maybe your own savings or some support from family and friends, and you want to inject some capital in order to take yourself to the next level. I think, the one main thing that I like to get across in sessions like this is in comparison to perhaps VC, angel, crowdfunding, a loan means that you retain 100% of your ownership of the business. So you're not giving up any of the pie. You're not going to have to share any of the proceeds of your hard work with anyone else. And it also means that you're able to manage your monthly payments. So you know exactly what your requirements are in terms of um, covering your loan repayments um, on a regular basis. Now, I said I'd go on and talk about startup loans. Virgin Startup, deliver, uh, we're a delivery partner of the startup loan scheme. And for those of you who haven't heard of startup loans, this is a personal loan that individuals can take out and use on their business. It's available for anyone that's pre-trading or who's been trading for less than two years and are based in the UK. You can borrow anything from 500 to 25,000 pounds for a period of up to five years. And the really, the really good thing to know is that there's no early repayment fees and there's no setup fees. So if your business goes great guns and you go, oh, I don't want these monthly payments, that's absolutely fine. You just pay off the balance and there's no sort of like, oh, but we need to add on this interest. You'll, you'll just pay off the balance. Um, if you also have a co-founder, then um, each of the co-founders can take out um, a loan because it's a personal loan and it's not related, it's, it's not attached to the business. Now, as a result of the pandemic, the startup loans company adjusted some of their lending criteria a bit, which um, could be useful and relevant to some of the people on the session today. 
before March last year, if you were taking out a startup loan, you had to prove that the majority of the loan was going to go towards your startup costs, for example, if you wanted to buy um, some equipment, if you needed a car in order to get around, set up your website, perhaps put a deposit down for um, a property. Post-March, um, you can now apply for a startup loan and 100% can, can be allocated towards working capital. So it's provided, it, it, it provides a really good opportunity for you to, to keep um, covering your, your overheads if, if, you need, if need be. Um, there's also different payment terms that are available that could be really useful for you in order to manage your cash flow as you start up your business. So there's the option to take out a capital repayment holiday as well as consider taking out the loan in um, two tranches. So for example, if you've not quite tested your idea and you're not sure how it's gonna be received in, in, with your market, you can say, I'd like to apply for 10,000 pounds, for example, but I'd like to just take 5,000 to start off with, get my first order in, maybe do an initial Instagram campaign. And then if that all goes well, you can come back and say, right, okay, now I need the remainder of the money so that I can start getting in more product, um, push more adverts, whatever it may be. So that's something worth bearing in mind when it comes to applying. Um, in addition to the funds, the startup loan scheme was set up to support people who weren't able to access finance elsewhere and also people who perhaps had, didn't have any experience in running a business. So, each loan recipient receives a year's worth of support alongside a community of budding entrepreneurs, and they're all on the same journey as you. Um, as an aside and a couple of quick stats, we carried out some research into the businesses we'd funded um, a few years ago, and 74% of the businesses that were funded by Virgin Startup were still trading after three years, and compared, we can compare that to a national average of 54%. So the support that you receive when taking out a startup loan can be invaluable. And Virgin Startup supported businesses also hire more and generate more turnover than the national average. So all good things when it comes to considering loan funding. Now, what is the support that we offer? Well, as part of the application process, you get access to a whole wealth of online resources and a range of tools. You get matched with your own um, business advisor as you go through the application process and they act as a critical friend. They'll help give you um, advice on how you can improve your um, application and, and perhaps give you suggestions on what you could um, consider in starting up your business. This year, we're also going to be launching an online course um, called How to Build Your Business. So for anyone who is still mulling over a couple of ideas, this will be a great opportunity to, to help, help you work through how do you make that idea into a reality. So you go through the process of the application. I should probably touch on we look for a business plan, cash flow forecast, and a personal survival budget. So similar to any other form of funding that you apply for, you need to provide proof of how, the, how you expect the business to perform. And once you receive the loan, you're then um, eligible to join our funded club. Now, it, it, and you get the post-funding support. So over the 12 months following um, drawing down the loan, you get access to our live webinars with industry experts. We also have a business support helpline and there are offers and opportunities from, BS, um, from our, our partners that we work with that help you raise the profile perhaps of your business and also offer discounts on um, products and things like that that are useful in, in terms of your um, helping you set up your business. There's also access to one-to-one um, -one business mentoring and this can be invaluable when you're setting out. It, we match you up with someone who's been where you've been and can really help support you in um, getting over those, those little niggles that you might have as you, as you set, set out on your startup journey. And this is all, all of that community, the 12 month support is delivered via our um, community platform, which also gives you an opportunity to engage with um, other, other members of our funded community. And you can reach out to them, ask them questions, get tips and advice, which is a really invaluable resource that, that, um, that we've set up. So um, 
I can I can essentially wrap up there and then take on any questions. It's often useful in terms of if you have any eligibility criteria um, questions about whether you can or can't apply for a loan, it's probably a really good idea if you jump into um, the breakout room with me and I'll be more than happy to pick those up. Or if you have any follow up questions and we can share um, my email address with you so that you can drop me a note and, and I can follow up at the end of this. So Anna, yes, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you so much, short and sweet, and it was absolutely perfect. I know there has been a few um, questions or uh, people wanting to chat to you, so hopefully we'll connect with them in the breakout room. I'm with you, so I'm excited to jump in there in one second, but I just wanted to say a quick and massive thank you to all of you, Lisa, Claire, Lisa, Helena and Kevin, you've all been absolutely amazing, um, so insightful, honestly, like I've taken so much away in just this one hour, so I'm even more excited now to jump into our breakout rooms, as I've mentioned a million and one times. Um, as I say, um, for anyone uh, still with us, just choose your victim who you want to chat to, obviously you can join more than one, we'll be sticking around for a little while. I've um, popped all the links in the uh, chat function right now for you to join um, and a, just a quick note that all the passwords um, is the word enter all in lowercase because you have to have security now with zoom so yeah just made it simple the passcode is enter all in lowercase so hope to see some of you um, in a few minutes hopping on with our experts to ask some burning questions just to chat a little bit more about funding, get some advice. Um, if you cannot join us, then absolutely no worries. Thank you so much for joining this event today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Such a great start to the year and keep your eyes out on Thursday for your exclusive um, one, uh, one day early access to the uh, magazine, which has even more information about funding, if that's even possible. So thank you very much to the panelists, everyone who joined, to my team and see you all very soon.